All right, let's move now to a very disturbing case of bullying that we've been following. The Limpopo MEC for Education, Polly Boschiello, and the Health MEC, Dr. Popi Ramatuba, will visit the Mbilwi Secondary School and the family of Lufuno Mavunga, who committed suicide after a video went viral showing the grade 10 learner being bullied by another learner. A 15-year-old learner now faces a charge of assault. For more, we speak to Tina Tiart from Hashtag stop bullying. Uh, Ms. Tia, thank you for being with us. So, so firstly, this, this is serious, uh, brutal bullying. If, if you've looked at the, the video, it looks like a violent movie. Um, how, how unusual is that, firstly? Um, I'm not sure that it's unusual. We, this week, already received a few similar videos, and it's really shocking. Not just the two people bully and a victim, but also all the others just laughing and not caring. So at a thousand women, we are very disturbed and we have now relaunched our anti-bully campaign. We need to help the children. A 15-year-old has reportedly been arrested, uh, presumably the one seen slapping her uh, so, so many times. Is that a good thing? You know, uh, it's, it's legal, it's got to happen, uh, but uh, rather we want to address the trauma that children are experiencing because even bullies most probably have been traumatized and we have to address this and we have to heal our children so that we have a much better future mm -hmm. in South Africa. Well, let's talk about that. Uh, in your opinion, what are the conditions um, that create a, a bully, that, that land up with a 15-year-old, that, that sort of hits another 15-year-old with impunity, with people watching very, very violently? Yes, well, according to our research and what the teachers are reporting to us, usually a bully has either been subjected to bullying and domestic violence at home, or it doesn't receive the necessary attention. We know absent fathers, we know mothers who work a hell of a lot. So yes, that is an issue. And thirdly, but something that we don't not really experience a lot, it's about jealousy about what other people have and they don't have. Yeah. Um, in my work, we really focus on those children who have been traumatized by GBV in their houses. All right, and then, I mean, if we look at this specific case, it always matters what adults do. Can you comment on the, on the reports? You have sent some of your trauma counselors to the school um, that, that people knew that, that she'd reported bullying and nothing was done. I think quite importantly is that we have to understand that parents can overreact or underreact. And that obviously has impact on what happens next. And then at schools, we have found very little policies. There are no rules for use of um, cellular phones. And also no way of really reporting of what is happening around bullying. So we really feel it's very important that schools come up with the policies not just come up with it, but also communicate this to learners and to parents and to the teachers, and that the teachers find the tools to deal with bullying in the classrooms. Yeah, but, but I mean, even in the absence of policy here, surely we can say if the, uh, the principal knew about this, uh, the principal should have acted, teachers should have acted. Yes, uh, we can, and parents, everybody should have acted. But you know what? We have discovered that people don't know how to react. They say the, the wrong words. They say the wrong things when it's reported. And that is secondary victimization. We also see that at police stations. So it's very, very important that we all get the tools, that we do a little bit of training, that we know how to create a safe space, and that we look after the children. Yeah. So, so that is what your organization is doing. Uh, tell us a little bit more, just maybe even give advice to parents um, who think their child might be bullied. I really think the first set of advice for parents and for teachers 
is to have safe spaces to create them and opportunities for children to share their stories and also have discussions with them about what is bullying, specifically cyberbullying, uh, which is the use of cell phone to victimize other people. And then really I, I firmly believe that we all have to do a little bit of trauma counseling because if we know how to deal with trauma, we would know what to say. And I always say tonight again, a parent asked me, what must I say? I say, rather ask your child, what would you like me to do before you jump to conclusion and run around uh, to the school or to wherever? First, have a good dis discussion with your child. Yeah, that, that is good advice. Um, and, and you mentioned uh, cell phone bullying. I mean, this apparently started on social media. Uh, Lufuna blocked her um, accuser, the, the other girl insulting her, and then it turned physical. Um, are, are they usually separate, sort of social media bullying versus physical, or, or are now those, those lines being blurred? I think those lines have definitely been blurred. And I think... Uh, children use all forms of bullying to to give outing to their feelings. I mean, we also know about taking their tuck shop money. We also know about calling them names. Also about telling other people how bad they are. There were letters going around in the one high school calling everybody sluts and have a list circulated. So, yes, um, and uh, obviously uh, the use of cell phone and social media has become prominent in our children's lives. And I think really, just not children, also adults, we have to teach one another yeah. how to use cell phones responsibly. You know, you can't just send anything out there in the public. All right. Uh, what a terrible case. Uh, a 15-year-old girl has been arrested and faces charges now. We'll follow that. Tina Tiat from hashtag Stop Bullying There. Thank you very much for your time. Let's recap.